Hi, my name is Stephanie and today I want to talk to you about autistic masking. I was diagnosed with autism late, actually at age 23. And this is the case for a lot of females on the spectrum. And that's because we're good at something called masking. That basically means hiding our traits and acting like others. While everyone masks somewhat, you know, in public, masking for someone on the spectrum is a lot more frequent and takes a lot more energy. So the problem with masking is, well, one, it's exhausting. And two, it can kind of come off as though the person who is doing it isn't necessarily genuine and that is because we tend to kind of look and copy what we see so we might think to ourselves oh i remember so and so doing the x y and z in a situation similar to this and so that can sometimes make us kind of come off as awkward and weird because it not all the time fits the particular situation we think it might apply to or a lot of times we're kind of opened up to bullying because people will kind of set a social situation up or a situation with sarcasm that's not super overt. So we get made fun of and we don't really understand why. And a lot of times we can kind of mask and try to copy what other people have done and it just doesn't fit in the situation. So I think masking benefited me a lot when I was younger and I guess even now. Um, I was pretty convinced I was fairly normal to an extent and uh, it wasn't until one of the ends of the year in middle school that I realized that I was the weird kid. Some boys had come up and they were like shoving another boy forward saying oh you like her you like her and he was kind of like disgusted <laughs> and was like oh I don't like her and I, the reason I know that I was the weird kid was because I'd seen the situation before where there was this boy and he was kind of weird and um, he would like hug everybody every single day or something. It was just kind of weird. I don't know. So the girls, what they would do is they would be like, ooh, you like him, you like him, just to get them to like freak out and respond. And that's what they were doing to him. But I was the weird one. So maybe I wasn't as good at masking as I thought I was. I don't know. And I'm not exactly sure that I'm all that great at masking uh, <laughs> to this day. And that's probably because the different demands that I experience in life can really drain my energy. So trying to put up a little front and mask for people and stuff like that, it, it's difficult. But I can do it for short amounts of time. So I try to limit my time with people as much as I can, especially on Sunday mornings at my church. Something about like standing there flailing your arms <laughs> uh, to new people because you don't know what you're doing in the situation is probably a little bit off-putting. This is where I really need trusted people around me, preferably people who are better at social interactions than maybe I am. I've noticed that I tend to follow people like literally physically follow people and also follow their actions. So this can kind of get annoying to people. Sometimes my husband's been kind of irritated because I don't necessarily take the lead like ever <laughs> or go first. So like for example in a buffet line I don't want to go first. I want someone else to go in front of me that I trust because I know that they're gonna do like the right thing in the situation so I can copy them and do what they're doing. Um, I used to not really think of that like consciously like oh I'm gonna watch this person as they do something but as time has passed I've begun to realize like if I'm told to go first it flips me out because I don't know what to do I want someone else to be able to like show me what I'm supposed to do so I can just model their behavior I can just copy their behavior and when I first was looking at autism or Asperger's I didn't really think that applied to me. I've read about like behavior modeling and you know copying stuff people and, and masking and stuff like that and the way it was presented was like oh they study others and so in my head I have you know I had to have like a pen and paper out like oh this is what they do. That's not necessarily the case. For me it's a very unconscious effort but when I lack the people to see and to watch to know what to do, it becomes apparent because suddenly it's like I don't know how to function in this space. I don't know what I'm doing and it is very, very unpleasant. And with some people, when I got closer to them, I would let them see my stims and I didn't know that they were stims. So <laughs> it was kind of interesting because I thought that they didn't do those things because 
it wasn't the right thing to do in public or something. Maybe it wasn't very refined. So when we were by ourselves, like, and I'm like, going in circles or just doing things that are kind of weird and out of the ordinary, I legitimately thought that they were just acting too good because <laughs> I thought that they did that in private. I thought that they did that maybe with their close friends or like in private or something, but they didn't. They, they don't do what I do and that would really strike me as weird because I sincerely thought like everybody does this, they just don't do it in public. Unlike me, they are not pretending all the time. They are not forcing a genuine sounding laugh at things that are quite frankly unamusing. I'm sure people do that in some settings, but I don't think that they do it as much as I do. They don't have to worry about like if they're standing in the right place, if they're in someone's way, if they're bothering someone by the proximity. They don't think about that stuff. They don't worry about literally just how their body exists in space with others or the next thing to say or how to decipher when people say, hey, how are you? while they're walking by because it's a question. So I don't I'm supposed to answer it, but then they just keep walking and then I'm like, I guess you're supposed to say, how are you back, by the way? I think that's how this happens. I don't know. My response is usually good. What about you? Because it's fast. So yeah, and it answers the questions. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe other people feel this way, but for a long time, I'd have to worry about whether what I was saying was being spoken too fast or if what I'm saying is like boring everyone else. And a lot of the times I can't tell because I'm way too wrapped up in talking about it. <laughs> but I feel like it's interesting to realize that there are so many things that I'm concerned about in social situations that other people just aren't. They don't have to worry about like hiding certain behaviors or acting like so-and-so because it's just natural to them and it's not natural to me. So I thought I'd just share my experience with masking with you all and hope that that makes a little more sense to you because if you were like me, it kind of seemed to be like people had to literally be like really creepily like sitting in a corner writing down every movement someone made and that's how they studied people and saw what they did and copied it or whatnot and that also might be just a case of me taking things literally so whatever if you don't have the problem cool for you i hope you enjoyed this video if you did go ahead and give it a thumbs up let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course if you're not already subscribed to me please do so i post every tuesday thursday and saturday so that's three times a week that you can hear from me and i hope you're having a wonderful week bye